called T for Transition. Um, and I wrote about it. Okay. Um, when I was a teen, I used to like to joke as a justification to an aversion to change. I am an escape artist. There are constant and overflowing reminders in life that time is happening. I never like these reminders. I hate twilight. I hate a jarring phone ring. Many of us do. I read recently that a study showed that people are most prone to instability and thus outbreaks of yelling or being extremely hurt during any of these seemingly minor transitional moments of the day. Many more traits of the psyche, perspectives of intellect, and physical characteristics seem to bring people together than separate them. An aversion to change is something I think many share. It's uncomfortable. It's how we deal with these moments of uprooting that define the varying directions of how our lives will progress from then on. Um, the dissociative feeling I'm interested in is, however, a response, not a source originating within itself. Inertia. Inertia can be generally defined as the resistance of any physical object to a change in its state of motion. Thanks, Vicky. Um, <laughs> um, this includes both something already in motion and also something that is still. In the case I'm relating to, inertia applies to the fact that it would take an immense, an immense force and amount of energy to begin to put life into motion, or rather accept that it is always motion. The inertia I'm speaking of is one of a comfort in the safety of a non-transition. I am in a constant state of inertia, a constant state of resistance, change, motion, transition, progression. Um, at the same time, I, I am in motion always. It is the nature of life and time. In response to being acutely aware of this dichotomy, I get far. At least that's one reason that I have, uh, through which I can understand this aversion. When I was in school, a teacher in seminar asked the student, why aren't you going to begin that project right now? A uh, student replied, I'm going to wait until my life settles. Then I could start it. Then it'll be a good time. The teacher uh, seemed to have an amused but concerned face and said, life doesn't settle. You just have to do. Life has changed. If I waited for a moment of stillness in life to start something, I would never start anything. Um, we are always part of our innate way of responding to life and its fears, curiosities, anxieties, dreams. Um, yet if my innate, or perhaps at least deeply ingrained way to respond to change is to flee, the least I've begun to do since facing myself is to try to stay stable in an otherwise tumultuous world. I used to hate laughing, not any laugh, but a joyous, full-blown release of a laugh, especially with others, that lest my spirit ultimately free for a brief moment. I hated it because in the millisecond that I began to almost laugh, something inside would realize that if I began, that moment would soon end, and the laugh would be over, and the joy would be gone. Everything felt contrived, far. It took some time. For me to understand that these moments, these happinesses, can be only in moments. Otherwise, they would be impossible to discern from the rest of life's array of experiences. Um, I still need to remind myself of this. Of this. Um, I think a major factor in understanding one's fears is understanding the capacity of one's imagination. If we tend to fear the unknown rather than the defined, then the unknown can represent everything and anything possible in the mind. It is always safer for me to accept the truth that is terrible, yet defined, and finite, than the possibilities of the truth that are yet to be discovered. Reality is left to anything, any worst or greatest, but undefined thing. Um, the inner monologues they create in order to deal with, process, cope with, understand, uh, what is happening every day? What is this thing we call life? These are the source of rhythm for me. I understand the world rhythmically, uh, literally in some physical manifestations of anxieties and compulsions, counting in 6, 8, and 9, 8 time. Um, but there also in, exists a sort of rhythm that is, as its own source, a very simplified root of what courses through each of us at all times, carrying life the most physiological, and so to me, a most concrete sense. And this is the rhythm and flow of blood, a major source of what drives us forward, without our being aware of it. Um, 
the thought inside of human blood through its meaning. And not only because it should be inside the dharma, it's the things I associate with it, its representations in my life, that also give me a reason to be interest. Beneath all the psychological developments and thinking, <coughs> social interactions uh, between each of us and their implications, beneath the way emotion and the psyche shape us daily, uh, in the form of constant minor and major stimuli, a conversation shared, an idea learned, a disagreement, a trauma, a growth, a loss, a gain. There exists a rhythm that courses forth between, because it's simply the way of things, anatomically, biologically. It is a rhythm that exists always, and is it, it is in motion always, coursing forward with a silent cadence. And it doesn't think about itself, it is just. Um, there's an absurdity maybe in the thought that the blood of any uh, physiological substance having an awareness of itself. Uh, but there for some reason is also an unrelenting absurdity that we each person as a whole and some of our cellular parts do have an awareness of ourselves. From what I understand, the images I'm making now, uh, such as this, this series, uh, T for Transition, are somewhat celebratory and extremely fascinated with the idea of a pulsating rhythm, coursing always, always in motion, and fluid both literally and also in its own awareness of itself, its non-awareness. Blood is only one source of this life force. Plant blood, chlorophyll, also carries incredible amounts of information through its veins, uh, just as animal blood does. Um, I want to know the root of things. Why we have, why and how we connect, where our lives overlap or result in distance, the places where our life paths grow and cross and interact and create meaning. I'm fascinated by the distance and isolation that humans tend to feel from each other, that I feel all the time just as many others might, looking at a physical root of what brings us together or where we differ, like a form of blood, is one starting point for me to find, uh, to find answers. Um, various forms of a rhythmic understanding of life run through the daily interactivity of humans and animals and plants that are made of this non-aware life force. We are here because of so many and no reasons. We live on because our blood lives on. Yet the seeming futility of daily, hourly, and lifelong living is something uh, I think about every day. When I wake up, I say, why? When it, many of us do. It's the irony of this question of existence that interests me also. Because we have the ability to ask this question, we also have the ability to answer it however we want, to create a purpose and a reason out of nothing, out of nothing but blood and sinew and bones and synapses.